Okay, so today, how to do statements of financial position, starting with classifying your assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. Uh, so this is exercise three, and as you can see, it starts here on page 22 of your book. And then the actual statement of financial position is on page 24. So in your trial balance here, I've just highlighted the things that actually go into your statement of financial position. Um, everything that's not highlighted, you'll be using in your income statement. So let's just go through and classify all the items in here. Uh, so the first thing is accounts receivable, and that is an asset. And we need to ask ourselves whether that's a current asset, i.e. something we expect to turn to cash in the next one year, or if it's a non-current asset, which is something we expect to keep and use for a period longer than the year, a year in the business. So, accounts receivable is money that people owe me, so I would expect them to pay me within a year. So we're going to call that a current asset. Bank is an asset again. Um, bank is already cash, or what we call cash equivalent. So that's already a current asset as well. A car. Now that's an asset as well. Uh, but I don't expect to sell that and turn it into cash in the next year. I expect to keep that for longer than a year and use it in the business. So that's what we call a non-current asset. Same with the delivery van. I expect to keep that and use that for longer than a year. So that's a non-current asset as well. Drawings. Uh, drawings are not an asset. They're what we call negative OE. So you might want to put negative OE. Or you can put D if you wish. It's up to you. Um, I usually put one of those. <coughs> okay. Uh, land. That is an asset. And I expect to keep and use that for longer than a year, so that is going to be a non-current asset. Premises, I expect to keep and use that for longer than a year, so that's a non-current asset as well. Okay, so let's go down to inventory as well, while we're right here. Okay, and inventory is the stock I have on my shelf, so that is an asset. I would expect to sell the things I have on my shelves within a year, hopefully. My business is going well. So we're going to call that a current asset. Okay. And over to the right or credit side of my trial balance. Uh, what have we got here? We've got accounts payable. So that's a liability. Um, and that's money that I've got to pay to other people. And I would expect to have to pay that within the next year. So that's a current liability. Okay. Capital. Uh, that is owner's equity. That's the money that um, the owner has put into the business or a reflection of the amount um, that the owner has put into the business or that the business owes the owner. Um, so that's owner's equity, O, E. And mortgage is the last one we have there. Uh, mortgage is a liability because I've got to pay it back. Um, but generally with a mortgage, I'll pay it back over a long time, especially this one, so it's $250,000. Um, so that's going to be a non-current liability because I expect to pay it back in a period longer than a year. So that is our trial balance. All the elements for our statement of financial position are classified. So now we need to use those to create our statement of financial position. Okay, so getting into the actual statement of financial position, there's one thing you need to know before we start, and that's the golden rule with these things. Now, the golden rule is net assets equal closing capital. Those two numbers have to be the same when we finish this statement of financial position. Um, the other things that you need to know are how to calculate net assets and closing capital. I'll get to those in a minute. First, let's start with the title. 
So with the statement of financial position, you're going to start with, funnily enough, statement of financial position. Four. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put the name of the business that you're doing this for in. So if we go back up to our trial balance, the question tells us that we're preparing it for the Arc Mobile phone supplies. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in here, preparing this for the Arc Mobile phone supplies. Then you're going to have as at. And you're going to put the date that you're preparing this for in there. Because if you remember, a statement of financial position is a snapshot. We're looking at the business at one particular moment in time. So we need to know what that particular moment is. How do we find that out? Well, we go back up to our trial balance. And you can see that it says we're preparing it as at the 31st of March 2013. So we go back down. We put in. 31st of March 2013. So that's our title done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the first part of that net assets equals closing capital equation. We're going to start calculating net assets. And we do that by going assets minus liabilities equals net assets. And because we're um, economics and accounting and business study students we're very smart I and mean, we know about current assets we know about non-current assets so we're going to split it up further into those categories when we're doing our assets part of this assets minus liabilities equation so we're going to start with current assets and what are we going to put under there how do i know what to put under there well again we go up to our trial balance and you can see that i have one current asset there I have another one there, and I have another one down here. So three current assets in total. So I'm going to put accounts receivable of 4,200, bank of 3,400, and inventory of 20,000 in under current assets. So bank, oh sorry, accounts receivable of 4,000. 200 um, bank of 3,400 inventory of 20,000 and what I want to do is I want to total that up so I'll put a line under there to say that I'm totaling and I get 27,600 so that's our current assets done so now I need to do plus because I'm adding them non-current assets. How do I know what to put in there? Well, go back up to here and you can see that I have car, delivery van, land and premises all as non-current assets. So we're going to go down and we're going to put those in there. So I'm going to go car of 12,000. going to go delivery van of 15. Land is 120,000. And premises of 340,000. <coughs> so I am going to total all those up as well because I want to know what all my non current assets total is. And I get $487,000. So that's my, all my assets part of the assets minus liabilities equals net assets equation. So how am I going to know what all my assets are worth? Well, I'm going to put in here total assets and I'll just add these two together so that I know. So 27,600 for my current assets. And 48,000 for my non-current assets gives me a total assets amount of 5,000. Oh, sorry, 514,600 dollars. So that's all my assets done. So to get my net assets, I go assets minus liabilities. So now I've got to do S because I'm going to minus them. Liabilities, and I'm going to start with my current liabilities. So 
So, um, in our trial balance, you can do the same thing and look. And the only current liability I have is accounts payable, and that's 2,900. So, and to go accounts payable of 2,900, that's the only one I have. So my total current liabilities are going to be 2,900. So then I need to do my non-current liabilities. And again, you can look up to find those. There's only one of them. That's the mortgage. And that is worth 250,000. So I'm going to total up all of my liabilities in order to get my total liabilities of $252,900. So now we can actually do the bit where we calculate our net assets. I'm going to go assets minus liabilities to get our net assets. So I know that all my assets are worth $514,000. Yep. I know that all my total liabilities are worth 252,000, so I'm going to go 514,600 minus 252,900, which gives me 261,700 dollars worth of net assets. So that's my net assets part of this done. Now the other part of this, if you recall, was closing capital, because our net assets have to eat our clo equal our closing capital. And you'll be happy to know that this is actually quite a lot smaller. So all we do here is we, we go owner's equity. This is the only other thing we have. And in owner's equity we start with capital. And that's if we go up to our trial belts. $110,500. $110,500. So, we're going to calculate our closing capital by taking this capital here, adding our net profit, which we get from our income statement, and minusing our drawings, which we call closing capital. So, capital plus net profit less drawings equals closing capital. You'll be happy to know that's always like that. For the rest of the ones you do for the rest of this year, it'll be like that. Capital plus net profit, less drawings equals closing capital. So net profit, if you go up here, you'll see that it's not actually in my trial balance anywhere. We, my, my net profit isn't in there. So where do I get that from? Well, I actually get that from my income statement. So you remember if you do an income statement, that you're trying to work out the net profit. So in the if you did the income statement on page 23, you'll see that the net profit there is $172,200. So that's what we put in there. We get that from our income statement. Right? Then we're going to minus our drawings, which we said was negative OED. And that's worth 21000 so, I'm going to put in there 21,000. And that's how we calculate our closing capital. So, all we're going to do there is put a line under it. And I think I will do it in this column. So, 110,500 plus 172,200 minus 21,000 equals 261,700. Okay, so my closing capital is 271,600. Sorry about that. 261,700. My net assets is worth 271,600. So my golden rule holds net assets equals closing capital. And that's our balance sheet done. Uh, that is the whole thing completed. So we've gone assets 
minus liabilities equal net assets and then we've got our uh, closing capital as well and they're equal so that's how you do uh, statements of financial position hopefully that helps um, if you either weren't in class when we did it or if you're struggling um, if you've got any other questions feel free to either ask me in class or if you're in another class ask your teacher or email me or something like that and we will see you again soon